Hey guys, Ballpark Keenan here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Optimus Foundation AMD water block. Now the Optimus Foundation has two versions, one for Intel and one for AMD. I haven't seen any reviews for the AMD version. I have seen a couple articles for the Intel version. I have seen some user reviews claiming a 10C drop in temperatures, and I've seen a lot of the reviews Optimus themselves have linked on their website claiming similar things, so I wanted to test it out myself. For our workload, I use the Blender Classroom Render and I set the output to 4K to really push the CPU and give it plenty of time to sit and enjoy the heat. The CPU we'll be using is the 3900X. Keep in mind these temperatures are Delta T over ambient, meaning the CPU temperature minus the room temperature. Now just for comparison, I have the EK Supremacy Evo, which is a fairly old block by now. Now the temperatures on the EK block were fairly high and are almost exactly what I was getting on air and I was half tempted to just throw these results out but they were fairly similar to what other people were getting on their custom loops so I left it in and I'll be able to use this to compare other water blocks in the future. Now the 3900X does run fairly hot especially at stock when the voltage can go up as high as 1.4 volts and in some cases even a little bit higher than that. Now that's where the Optimus Foundation comes in. Once the temperature is settled in, you can see we hovered around 60C for the EK block and around 40 to 41C on the Optimus Foundation. And on our next chart showing the average temperature, again, Delta T over ambient, on the Optimus Foundation at idle, we hit 21.1 average and full load, we have 40.49 degrees Celsius. Next up, we put our CPU in full stock and only controlled the F clock. And this test is just to show the average effective clock over time. And since the EK block is about 20 degrees hotter, the Optimus Foundation is able to let the CPU clock about 100 megahertz higher, as you can see in our average chart. This also gives you a great idea of how cooling affects your CPU. Now 100 megahertz really isn't gonna make that much of a difference, but you're able to get a little bit more performance before you even overclock. Now, one of the biggest reasons why I suspect the older EK block is performing so poorly is there's a giant bump in the middle, as you can see with this picture, versus the Optimus block, which is fairly flat, as you can see here. Now, this isn't really scientific since it's just me holding a roller up to the water block, but it shows the giant bump in the middle of the EK block, whereas the Optimus block is fairly flat in comparison. Now I suspect for the EK block, this is because it was meant for Intel and the Optimus block that we have here, the AMD version was specifically designed for AMD. One of their big factors in their marketing, as well as I would suspect in the performance we saw, is how they've laid out their CPU block. This isn't exactly to scale, but it gives you a good idea of how the water block covers the CPU die and how the water moves over the die themselves. This setup lets water flow directly over the CPU dies, and with the massive fin array, it's able to quickly move heat away from the CPU. Now with the numbers out of the way, what comes in the box? You get your mounting hardware, the CPU block itself, instructions, and a spatula with the Kingpin cooling thermal paste. So after all the testing was done, I was really impressed with the CPU block. It kept the temperatures of the CPU right about 40 degrees above ambient, which gives you a decent amount of room to overclock. I'll have to see how these blocks stand up to the test of time, but I just got a feeling that they will be fine in the long term based on the build quality and the fact that they come with a 10 year warranty. One thing I did think was really cool was that the inlet is built into the acrylic, as you can see here. I am interested in how you think they look, and I know looks are fairly subjective, but I really like the simple look of these, no RGB, just straight to the point, beautifully machined, little works of art. If I can get my hands on one, I'd like to see how this thing performs on the newer Ryzen chips, even though I have a feeling it's going to be the same spectacular performance as we saw here. Really, there should be no difference. Hopefully this review was helpful, and if you have any comments, be sure to let me know. Or if you just need to scream, you can do that in the comments too. It's a great place to do that. But again, I hope this video was helpful, and thanks for watching. Oh, uh, that was a great, <laughs> that was a great uh, little end. 
quiet on set, please? No, 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 we're recording audio. <laughs> There we go. Be so <laughs> Now with all the numbers out of the way, what do you get in the box? Well, you get the mounting hardware, instructions, the CPU block, I would hope. <laughs> I want to thank you for watching, and I hope this review of the Optimus Foundation AMD version... <sighs> Huh.